Sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Click on the link in the description and enter promo code UNDECIDED for 84% off and four extra months for free. With the growing popularity of solar and wind, we sometimes forget another powerful low carbon energy source, nuclear. It can be a divisive topic, but there's a really interesting alternative to building up massive, expensive nuclear power plants that's worth talking about. Small modular reactors. What are they? What are the benefits? And do they really address the downsides of nuclear energy? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. When the word nuclear comes up, most people think of mushroom clouds, wars, and disasters. But even though there is a scary history behind nuclear energy, many consider it essential to establishing a reliable, carbon-free energy supply. We've been producing nuclear energy since the first nuclear power plant was connected to the Soviet power grid in 1954. It's widely considered to be a stable, carbon-friendly energy source that can be used to support the intermittency of renewables such as wind and solar. Some countries like France, Slovakia, Ukraine, and Hungary rely on nuclear to produce electricity, and it accounted for 10.3% of the world's electricity generation in 2019. However, that number was higher in the past. In 1996, nuclear accounted for 17.7% of the global power generation. Only a net of 2.4 gigawatts of new nuclear generation capacity came online in 2019, compared to 98 gigawatts of solar and 59.2 gigawatts of wind. What's caused that sizable decrease? And why aren't we building out more nuclear? The major events of Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and more recently Fukushima certainly made people fear nuclear energy and stalled the industry's growth. But the safety threat and nuclear waste aren't the only causes of nuclear energy being left out in the cold by governments and investors. The intermittency of renewables needs to be supported by fast and responsive energy generation. Nuclear power plants could be a stable and low carbon solution for this problem, but they're complex, expensive, and usually take about six years to build, and some have significant delays during construction. The time it takes varies project to project, but one report gave a cost estimate for a new U.S. nuclear power plant of $5,945 per kilowatt. On the other hand, the average cost of a natural gas generator installed in 2018 was $837 a kilowatt. And the construction of those come in around two years. So you can see why natural gas power plants are more appealing to a utility, even though they're not as carbon friendly as nuclear. According to the World Nuclear Industry Status Report from 2020, the levelized cost of energy from nuclear power rose from around $117 per megawatt hour in 2015 to $155 by 2019. In comparison, solar and wind reached $40 and $41 per megawatt hour, respectively. The report stated, What's remarkable about these trends is that the costs of renewables continue to fall due to incremental manufacturing and installation improvements, while nuclear, despite over half a century of industrial experience, continues to see costs rising. The nuclear industry needs an escape route, something to make it more financially attractive, reduce construction time, but still comply with all the numerous safety standards that are needed. The escape route has been to invest in new reactor technology. I have another video about thorium reactors on my channel showing its advantages and challenges, but another trend that I've seen in my research and from comments from a lot of you is around small modular reactors. It promises to reduce construction costs and time as well as to improve safety. Many people believe that they can be the future of nuclear power, but what is it exactly? Now, compared to regular sized reactors that are really just massive, small modular reactors have a much smaller footprint, which means they can be built more quickly and safely in factories. And then they can be shipped to an installation site. But how small is small? Well, they're small enough to fit in trucks and shipping containers. Compared to conventional large scale nuclear reactors that have to be built on site and have unique designs, Small modular reactors can be manufactured in factories with standardized designs. This means you can scale production, reduce costs, and lower the risks of delays in the construction of the nuclear power plant. The World Nuclear Association defines SMRs as nuclear reactors that are generally 300 megawatts equivalent or less, designed with modularity in mind. And to round off the SMR terminology, there are also units called very small modular reactors, or VSMRs, of up to 15 megawatts. Compared to the world's largest reactors that have topped 1.6 gigawatts of power capacity, this new technology is pretty small, now isn't it? New Scale Power, one of the frontrunners in SMR development, has designed a small modular reactor that would take up 1% of the space of a conventional reactor, where a typical commercial reactor cranks out a gigawatt of power, each New Scale SMR would generate just 60 megawatts. The in-factory fabrication feature of SMRs can significantly reduce on-site preparation and construction costs, as well as make it possible to set them into remote locations that wouldn't normally be possible with a larger power plant. 
Also, SMRs can be linked with other energy sources, including renewables and fossil fuels, to increase grid stability and security. Now, talking about money, for about $3 billion, NewScale would install multiple 12 megawatt SMRs to build a 720 megawatt nuclear power plant. That's about 20% cheaper per megawatt than the $14 billion that were quoted for two traditional 1.25 gigawatt units currently being installed near Waynesboro, Georgia. And that construction has been hit by delays and a ballooning cost up to $28 billion. So what about safety? Nuclear power plants are complex buildings that rely on external power systems such as AC power, backup generators, and batteries to cool down the reactor's fuel in case of a power loss, which increases the accident risks. Suppose something that wasn't considered in the design happens. In that case, it may cause the system to fail, which is what happened in Fukushima's nuclear disaster in 2011, when a second tsunami that wasn't expected hit the nuclear power plant. On top of that, maintenance and refueling are an additional complexity for nuclear power plants. Every 18 to 24 months, these plants are shut down for refueling, which usually takes about a month without energy production. And SMRs can be a promising candidate to reduce those downsides. When we talk about nuclear reactors, we refer to the containment building with large walls, safety measures, and cooling. But with SMRs, it's different. These small reactors fit right into other structures or come with their own containment structure. And some of these designs have long refueling cycles. For example, a 5 megawatt micromodular reactor from UltraSafe Nuclear Corporation, <laughs> you gotta love that name, requires no refueling in its 20 year operating lifetime. And a 100 megawatt ARC 100 small reactor would have a refueling cycle of similar 20 years. SMRs enhance safety and security through lower thermal power of the reactor core and use passive safety systems. This means they have less reliance on active safety systems like additional pumps and AC grid power, generators, and batteries. NuScale's SMR employs natural water circulation to passively cool its reactor down. The thermal safety system incorporates an on-site water reservoir located on the sides of the outer vessel, which removes the heat from the core, avoiding a complex meltdown. In an eventual emergency, specialized valves open automatically, which allows steam to be released from the reactor vessel into the containment vessel. The steam then condenses and water flows back down into the core through a second set of valves at the bottom of the reactor vessel. This helps cool the reactor down. The steam generated by boiling water recirculates, setting up a passive safety cooling process that lasts until the heat and pressure finally stabilizes. All of this cooling and power control happens with no external interference, no AC or DC power, no operator, and no additional water similar to proposed molten salt thorium reactors. Now, considering all these advantages, many countries have been investing a lot of money and research into developing SMRs. Oregon-based New Scale, for example, has spent more than $800 million on its SMR design. In 2010, the company had estimated a capital cost for a 12-module, 540-megawatt New Scale plant would be about $4,000 per kilowatt, but that estimate rose over time to about $5,000 per kilowatt. They estimated that the LCOE would be about $100 per megawatt hour for the first unit. But by 2018, the company declared that its reactor could produce 20% more power than originally planned. It's still subject to Nuclear Regulatory Commission approval, but this would lower the overall capital cost to about $4,200 per kilowatt, and then lower the LCOE by about 18%. Other American SMR developers include GE Hitachi Nuclear Energy, the Bill Gates-backed Terra Power, and X Energy. The China National Nuclear Corporation announced in 2019 it would start building a demonstration of its 125 megawatt SMR reactor on the northwest side of an existing Changzhang nuclear power plant by the end of the year. Canadian Arc Nuclear is also developing an exportable factory-produced 100 megawatt sodium coolant nuclear reactor with fuel costs fixed for about 20 years. They also have a company called Terrestrial Energy that's been developing and integrating components from two existing designs, the Denatured Molten Salt Reactor and a small modular advanced high temperature reactor. Now, Russia is also dabbling in this area. They have a nuclear engineering company that's released their first floating nuclear power plant. It's power barge that employs two 35 megawatt SMRs, and it started operation in December 2019 in its permanent location off of the Chikaka district, and by May of 2020 was fully commissioned and had delivered 47.3 gigawatt hours of energy, covering 20% of the demand in the region. But is this all too good to be true? Before I get to that though, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now I know we're not traveling much right now, but I still like to use a VPN when I want to protect my privacy online. Surfshark encrypts all of the data that you send over the internet, so passwords, messages, photos, and videos, and whatever you're doing online stays private. A lot of online services use some pretty sophisticated commercial targeting and tracking, and a VPN can protect you from that. 
With Surfshark's clean web, it blocks ads, trackers, and malicious websites, making it safer to use the internet, even at home. One of the best parts of Surfshark is that it's easy to set up on all of your devices, whether that's iPhone or Android, Mac or PC. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use with an unlimited number of devices. Use my code to get 84% off, plus four extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Link in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. So are SMRs too good to be true? Well, although progress has been made in SMR technology, licensing and certification are a major stumbling block for SMRs, as well as the potential design changes and increased security. New scale design, for example, is still in the licensing stage and faces important security questions, which include potential problems with a system that automatically shuts down its reactors in an eventual emergency. Normally, convection circulates water laced with boron to control the nuclear reaction through the core of New Scale's reactor. As I mentioned earlier, if the reactor overheats, it shuts down and the valves release steam into the containment vessel, where it condenses and flows back into the core. However, the condensed water can be low in boron, and reviewers are concerned that the low boron level might mean that it won't be able to stop the core. This has complicated their approval process. In addition to that, even though SMRs can be cheaper and safer, they still have to contend with economies of scale. Conventional power plants have thousands of megawatts of power production capacity compared to the dozens or hundreds of megawatts from SMRs. An analysis performed in 2019 showed an SMR levelized cost of energy ranges between $46 and almost $90 per megawatt hour. And that's with a lot of uncertainty around resource costs. Nuclear power's biggest rival is natural gas, and it has an LCOE of about $45 per megawatt hour. Another issue that's pointed out by critics of nuclear power is the unresolved problem of what to do with long-lived radioactive waste. SMRs that use pressurized water reactors will still generate highly radioactive fuel, and no country has proposed a permanent solution for how to safely store that type of waste. Dr. Gordon Edwards, the president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility, wrote, Radioactive leftover used fuel from the new reactors will still require safe storage for hundreds of thousands of years. The International Atomic Energy Agency also has written about this topic. Solutions for managing spent fuel and radioactive waste arising from SMRs will be one of the most important factors to take into account when choosing a technology, along with the security of the fuel supply. Despite the challenges, SMR supporters look at this as a potential solution for nuclear power to be more cost-effective, safe, and competitive, it gets other fast response power sources to balance an increasingly intermittent power supply that comes from solar and wind. They may be right, but there are still concerns about SMR technology that need to be addressed and unresolved problems with nuclear power in general that need solutions before this carbon-free power source can be considered viable worldwide. Now jump into the comments and let me know what you think and if there's anything I have missed in SMRs. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.